Hello, this is Dr. Gandhi. Welcome to my video on using the t-test function in Microsoft Excel. I have here a fictitious set of data in this worksheet that represents a study where you have a group, an independent variable, at two levels. One level is control and the other is treatment. And then a set of scores associated with each of these participants. And we use a t-test in this case, or we can use a t-test, to determine if the scores from one group, so the scores from the control group in this case, are statistically significantly different from the scores in the treatment group. So there are a couple ways of running a t-test in Excel, and this video is going to cover the t-test function. I'm also going to take a look at the other method, which is uh, data and data analysis to show you the advantages and disadvantages of each method. But let's start with the t-test function. So it'll be equal sign and t-test. And you can see it's looking for, the first argument it's looking for is array 1. So let's make that the control group. So that'll be B2 through B21. That's the scores associated with the control group. And then of course array 2 will be the scores associated with the treatment group. So then we put in a comma here and we can see now it's asking for is this a one-tailed distribution or a two-tailed? Right. What kind of result do we want? Let's say that we want a two-tailed distribution and then it's going to ask us the type. And there's three types available. The first is a paired samples t-test, also known as a dependent samples t-test. So to select option one, the kind of study we'd have to have would be where one group of participants was measured two times. So let's say that this score is measuring a knowledge level on a construct that you're teaching. So if this were a dependent samples, if this was an example where we use a dependent samples t-test, this one group here, for example records 2 through 21, would be assessed with this measurement and then some special teaching method would be applied and they'd be assessed again. So it's the same group being assessed more than one time. And that's not what we have here. We have two separate groups. We have a control group and a treatment group. So the control group received whatever teaching method uh, was usual, also called treatment as usual, and the treatment group received the special teaching method. We want to see, in this case, if the treatment group was statistically significantly different, if the scores were statistically significantly different than the control group. So we know this wouldn't be uh, paired samples. So the next choice here is two sample equal variance. So in this case we would assume equal variances, also known as homoscedasticity. Well, we don't know just by looking at the data if it's homoscedastic or heteroscedastic, meaning it has unequal variances. And this is a limitation of the t-test function. Now I'll show you uh, a few ways we can get around that. Uh, but I happen to know that in terms of these scores, they are homoscedastic. We can assume equal variances. So we're going to select 2 in this case. And you can see the resulting value, uh, the significance level, is point. 0, 1. So if we set the alpha at 0 0.05, 0 0.01 of course is lower. This is just above 1%. So 1% is lower than 5%. So we would reject the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis states that there is no difference between the groups. So we're going to reject that null hypothesis and assume that there is a difference between the groups. There is a statistically significant difference between 
the control group scores and the treatment group scores. So everything here at the t-test function is fairly straightforward except for the assumption of homogeneity of variances. We would need to test for that before we would know what value to enter in for the last argument here in the t-test. So you have the option of performing a Levine's test, and I have a separate video that covers that. You also have the option of using a modified Levine's test, and I have a separate video that covers that as well. Or you could use an F-test two sample for variances, which is available here under the data ribbon under data analysis. You can see F-test two sample for variances. Now if you don't have data analysis, on your data ribbon, just go to File, Options, Add-ins, and you can see down here it says Manage Excel Add-ins. Just click the Go button there, and you can see mine is already checked off, the Analysis Tool Pack, so yours might look like that. Just check that off and click OK, and then Data Analysis will become available. So I'm going to run the F-test to sample for variances using the data over here. So we'll click OK for this. And you can see it's already pre-populated. Uh, let me just delete these out. And I'll show you how I configured this. So variable one range would be the control group. Variable two range would be the treatment group. And we're not using labels. We want the alpha to remain at 0 0.05. We just need to select an output range. So that's where it appears on the worksheet. So I'm just going to put it right under the t-test function here. So it would be D3. And click OK. The value that I'm interested in here is the p-value, and you can see it's 0.16. The null hypothesis is that we do have homogeneity of variances, and since 0.16 is greater than 0 0.05, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we are going to assume equal variances in this case. If this value were less than 0.05, in your t-test function for the last argument instead of 2, you would have selected 3 because you would be assuming unequal variances in that case. And of course you can use the t-test function I've done here or in data analysis you can also run a t-test. And you can see here you have to select uh, again paired two sample assume equal variances or two sample assuming unequal variances, very similar to the selection you have for the function. Of course, in this case, we're going to select uh, that we're assuming equal variances. And again, you can see this is uh, pre-populated, but it's fairly straightforward. You go to uh, variable one range and select the control, and variable two and select the treatment just as we did for the f-test. And then we don't have labels. We're going to leave the alpha set at 0 0.05. And then we have to select an output range. And I'm going to put that right below the f-test. Click OK. And you can see that the two-tail value here, the two-tail significance level, is 0.05. 0, 1, 1, 3, 3, and so on. You see that matches the result of the t-test function. So you, you end up with the same result. Uh, this method using the data analysis uh, tool pack gives you more information uh, about the data, but the value that we're really concerned about is identical either way. One important thing to note when using uh, the data analysis functions versus the functions in, in built into the worksheet like the t-test function 
is say that you change something, like you run these analyses as I've done, and you change something in the data set. Uh, perhaps there was an error in data entry, or you're adding records. The built-in functions, the functions built into the actual worksheet, as opposed to the ones in data analysis, are dynamic. So if I were just to select a value from the control group here, and just arbitrarily change it to something else, I'll change this 37 to a 45, you can see it updates the t-test function, but it will not update what was produced from the data analysis functions. This two-tail value remains the same, whereas the t-test function has updated to reflect the change. It's important to remember in this case, however, that you, when you make changes to the control group or the treatment group scores, even though the t-test function will dynamically update, you don't know if you have changed the assumption of homogeneity of variances or not. You don't know if you've now violated that assumption or if you had violated it previously, if you now can assume homogeneity of variances. If you want an Excel worksheet that dynamically updates both a homogeneity of variances test and the t-test value, I would suggest combining a Levine's test, which you can run with all functions. And again, I have a separate video for uh, Levine's test and, and modified Levine's test. You can combine those functions with the t-test. And if, as you change data, both will update dynamically. So in an instance like that, you may want to display this value, the t-test value, that assumes equal variances. If I say I go into this function, and I click F4 over these ranges, I can make them absolute. So I can auto-fill this down. Now, of course, this is going to be the same result. But now I can assume that we violated the assumption of homogeneity variances by selecting 3. And you can actually have both results. And then based on the result of the Levine's test, you'll know which result is accurate. So this top result, this t-test result here, assumes equal variances, and the bottom result assumes unequal variances. I hope you found this video on using the t-test function in Microsoft Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.